the orange eye and the red fin and the blue flank. It's just exquisite perfection in my eyes. I'm often asked, uh, what is it about roach? And I simply can't answer the question, so please forgive me if I don't even try here. But they are just amazing, amazing creatures. I'm often asked where the fixation with roach started for me. I often ask the same question of others, and a lot of people say, well, it was the first fish they caught as a child. But for me, that certainly wasn't the case. For me, there was a single, unforgettable, defining moment. Um, I was about 10. Every Sunday in the school holidays, we would be taken to, uh, to fish the Medway in Kent, where we catch little gudgeon and ruff uh, and the odd perch. And I can remember lifting into this fish, this huge, enormous, great big fish. I'd never seen anything like it. Uh, my legs went to jelly. I remember as I watched it flashing in the green water. Uh, I think it was the first time Dad had to use the landing net. And uh, I think it was the first fish I ever had to use two hands to hold. Um, uh, it must have been it getting on for six, even eight ounces. It was absolutely colossal for me. And I can remember when, I came, when it came to letting it go, I remember laying down and lowering the fish in my hands in the water, but not opening my hands to release the fish. Uh, I just kind of hung on to it and just, for, just for a moment. And suddenly the whole world just stopped and nothing else existed other than me and this beautiful roach. And there was a connection, that I, it is an indescribable connection that, that, that happened in those moments. And I can then remember just opening my hands gently and watching this fish fade into the green depths. And I remember writing an article when I was asked the same. And, uh, and I described as she disappeared into the green depths where her life would continue unchanged, where mine would never be the same again. And ain't that the truth? <laughs> And we're often, as roach nuts, we're often asked, you know, we often have our uh, preferences as to uh, how, we, how we fish for our, our beloved species. And my preference is uh, the trotted float. I love a 15 foot acolyte, serious weapon, absolutely handles all sorts because of the depth and the, uh, the width of the river often. Uh, my trotting setup, well, really, I'm just Joe Average. Uh, I don't do anything anybody else does, doesn't do. It's just a simple, Loafer float and olivet and um, shotting patterns to suit depths, flows and, uh, and what have you, and hooks to suit the bait. With regard to a loafer, uh, one thing I do do is I always keep a, uh, a yellow float with exactly the same weight in my pocket and I also use very thick black rubber bands. So should the light change and I need a, a, a black float, all I need to do is to slide the the, uh, the, the, the thick rubber up, so I've actually got a black float because it covers the, uh, the red. And also a little trick I use for, you know, because the, the, the roach nuts always need that last 10 minutes of daylight. And uh, sometimes depending on the light conditions, if I just slide the red one out and put the, the yellow one in, you can get another 10 or 15 minutes sometimes trotting. So that's a little, a little trick that I use. More of more significance and importance is the reel I use, which is a, a, an ancient old uh, material. And it was given to me by uh, one of my angling heroes, uh, a man called Wilf Polkenhorn, who sadly passed away. But um, he gave me the reel before he passed, and he said that uh, that was the only way that he could make sure I got it. He said because he wouldn't have been able to make sure I got it once he passed. And uh, he was, as I say, uh, nobody will have heard of him, but he was uh, an absolute angling legend. Wilf got from a day's fishing what we all think we do, uh, what we all like to, but I've witnessed on plenty of occasions that he actually did get the best from a day's fishing. Minnows dimpling my float there. I think that was a little touch. Oh, I bumped it. Oh, Trevor.
Well, I have to say we've been treated some, to some absolutely perfect roach fishing conditions today. Mild, stillish, overcast, low light conditions. Lovely temperature. Perfect. The only thing that's letting it down is the rather imperfect roach angler. I've got a lovely gentle breeze over my right shoulder, keeping presentation perfect. As I'm proving there, I think this is another little roach. Yes! What an absolutely fantastic animal. What a beautiful creature. Absolutely stunning. And we roach anglers, we watch our floats traveling like a little red bead rolling across a glass table, which we are hoping with every cast is interrupted by the screaming electric shock as it falls off the edge, as we lift into the heart-stopping, unmistakable thumping resistance of a big roach. A very privileged connection with this other realm where we actually get to see and touch its treasure, if we're lucky. And here we have an example of Avon Roach perfection. I'm sure you'll agree. Agree. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Is that what I think it is? It is, you know, it's a short-eared owl. So what's next for me? Uh, well, firstly, I would say that uh, I'm going to be doing an awful lot more roach fishing. Uh, I'm back on the river uh, more frequently than ever before. I'm like a big kid. It's like I've just discovered it. I'm absolutely loving it. With regard to uh, the Avon Roach Project, I've said that um, a number of times that it's coming to an end, but that's actually strictly not true. It's not actually going to be terminated. Uh, although the, uh, the full-on eggs in the tanks and the stews and, uh, and what have you, that is coming to an end because there's no need for us to do it anymore. The river is in, the, in, in good health. Um, but uh, we're, the, the, there will always be an Avon Roach project. We, it, it would be unreasonable us, of us to remove the, the knowledge and experience we have uh, and uh, deprive anybody that, that uh, requires that. So we'll always be there to advise and help others. And we'll also do, we'll continue to do the habitat stuff, you know, the habitat restoration stuff. We might place spawning boards in the river and move, you know, do the, the odd little bit here and there. Um, but generally it's going to uh, it's going to be wound down um, but like I say they will always be involved with the river in some way or other and other rivers that uh, that, that, that we advise um, and anybody that wants their help there we are is another one That movement. We're now approaching the last few drops of daylight, a time when every roach angler's pulse and blood pressure rockets, and the last few moments as the light fades is the best time for roach. Never enough of those moments in a day. But we've been treated to a lovely day today, overcast and mild, so um, we've enjoyed fishing, you know, enjoyed good sport for much of the afternoon, really, so nothing to complain about. 
Not that anybody can complain about roach fishing on the Hampshire Raven. Oh yes, what a roach. Beautiful, that's the one we're after. The fish of dreams, certainly the fish of my dreams. I never tire of catching these buttes. And I'm transported back 50 years to where it all started, that same moment, that connection. And how wonderful to uphold the promise to dear old Wilf to continue catching wonderful Avon roach on the match aerial that he gave me before he passed.